Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, we're back. It's the Bride of Pimpy. I'm Jesse. I'm Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're on All Hallows Eve Eve right now. No, it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is my yeah. bad. Sorry. Yeah, because then guess what's tomorrow? Halloween. It's Halloween, but what's also tomorrow? All Hallows Eve. Our anniversary. Oh, that too. My bad. Yeah, we got married on Halloween in 2020 because we wanted... We chose the scariest time to be married. Yeah, it was like <laughs> dumb. That was dumb thinking on our part. Steven Soderbergh, uh, basically Contagion movie. But yeah. with a wedding, that was like our wedding theme. Just like, it was, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised with a, a room full of comedians, no one started coughing blood into a napkin. Because oh. I mean, I'm just saying, just saying, we, my comedians, we could be very ignorant of certain things. And we're like, I know this is wrong, but. That was is a missed it opportunity. Is it funny? Well, a lot That's of offensive. A, a, a lot of offensive things happen at our wedding. Well, yeah, some other stuff which I can't say because then we'll get yelled at. Yes, yes, indeed. But for right now, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, right now, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, Pearl. Yep. And as you can see on the bottom, we're asking, you know, did you like Pearl? Comment your favorite uh, part of the movie, The Kills, and all that stuff. And uh, right now, before we start. Uh, we want to show some love to horror books, okay? Because, you know, one of the things is Sarah reads a lot of books. And you guys reacted so hard. You just, you love the Halloween novelization stuff. So we wanted to continue with that. So tonight, Sarah, why don't we uh, go over to our next segment, the horror book talk, everybody. Okay. So this is a segment, we might not do it every single episode because my true book genre love is fantasy. But I do read a good deal of horror and thrillers. So today, Let's do it. this book is called Final Girl Support Group. If you like the classic uh, slasher movies, this is for you. So there is a character based off of Nancy from Nightmare, uh, Sydney from Scream, uh, Lori from Halloween. I think there's a, a girl... Uh, final girl based off of Sally. So this is essentially about, this is like decades after all of the girls in the support group have lived through their massacres. And now they're just trying to be functioning adults in society, but with, they have a shit ton of trauma going on. So um, what ends up happening is um, a, another killer pops up and is trying to pick off the final girls, one by one by one. It's really interesting. You get a lot of good homages to all the classic final girls. Um, the main final girl that you follow, like her POV, her name is Lynette. Um, she is based off of Silent Night, Deadly Night, the remake, not the original. Like the second remake or the reimagining remake? I think it's the reimagining remake. Oh, you mean the one where it has nothing to do with Black Christmas? Right. Okay. No, yeah. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Sorry, no. sorry, sorry, sorry. Keep going. So, you a lot like, of horror Christmas movies, believe it or not. We'll a, talk about that during Christmas time. Yeah. Um, but if you love the classic slashers, this is for you. Somebody else needs to read this because I need somebody else to talk to about it. I can't read. No, you can't read, but you would love this book. It's right up your alley. Um, it's so thick. It's so thick. It's really not though. It's thick. I so, read this. Show how thick it is. Oh, so thick. So no, thick. No, it's not. It's so thick. I read this in two days. Like, I absolutely binged it. 10 out of 10 would recommend if you read this, please tell me so we can talk about this. I want a sequel so badly. Well, okay. you heard it here. So be sure to check out that book. So, so real quick, I want to ask you about the killer. So the killer in this book, what is he like? Is he like uh, a conglomerate of like all the builds we've seen in movies before? Uh, no. It's pretty much, it's just a guy that wants to pick off the final girls. So the way it kicks so off. So he's just like, there's a support group of people with PTSD. Yeah. That's my thing. So the final girls are in a support group that is very, that was very notable. And they've stuck with the same therapist. Um, and the book ki kicks off with, there's another massacre. So there's a new final girl. Mm -hmm. They're all triggered by it. And then some of the other final girls in the support group start to get picked off, not necessarily by the same killer, but just a killer. I don't want to say too much because it gives it away. Um, it's more, it has a murder mystery, like scream vibe to it, where you're trying to figure out who did it. Mm. Um, 
very, very good. Kind of like Terror, Terror Train last night when we watched that. Yeah. Yeah, which, by the way, good movie. Check it out. The 2B1 ruins the whole plot to us, so don't even bother with that movie. But anyways, go check out that book. That is a, it, it definitely, I like I said, something i got to read. I'm going to have to probably mm-hmm. get uh, the book or audio book. It's the only way I'll ever get it. I say book on tape still. That's how old school I am. Yeah. Yeah. But final words for the final girls. Read it. Read it. There you go. All right. Check it out. So let's talk about the main girl tonight we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Pearl. All right. Now, real quick, there will be spoilers yeah. for the movie Pearl. We're going to be we're going to be spoiling it left to right. So you could hit, you could, you know, put a pin on this episode and watch a little later. But anyways, let's get into it. So we quick little recap and our dogs are fighting. Sorry about that. No, not like Michael Vick fighting. Just- playing. Playing. There are also going to be spoilers for X in this. So if you have not seen X, yes. you've been warned. So if you didn't see X, warned. Now, real quick. So just to give a uh, quick little spiel of uh, X. So let me give that real quickly and then you can give Pearl. Okay. So X essentially is the movie about a a film crew that are going to film pornography in what is a 70s Airbnb, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and a farm where uh, Pearl and Howard live. And eventually, their sexual promiscuity uh, reawakened something in Pearl because she, well, maybe it didn't reawaken, no, but maybe it, it was always there. It was always there, but it kind of it, it went it went from a five to a ten. We and, agree on that. Yeah, and Pearl and Howard, this is very important. They're in their like eighties, seventies, or eighties. It's an important factor in all of Howard's this. heart can't take it anymore. He can't give his wife. Good loving, all right? It might be the last loving he ever gives if they fuck. There. That was the important factor you wanted to say, right? Anyways, so so you got a sex-deprived Pearl who sees Mia Goth's character, who's in the foreign crew, who reminds her of her. Spoiler alert, Pearl's also played by Mia Goth. Yeah. So there's, like, this kind of, like, meta uh, metaphor uh, for it all. Meta metaphor. I love that phrase. Meta metaphor. No. No, anyways. Uh, sorry. Guys. Guys. Sorry, this is our dogs. Um, they have now chosen this exact moment to play. And throw each other against our camera stand. But that's just life. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, one of the things I wanted to go over real quickly. So the porn crew, they get off to it. They're they're making this film. I always love the camera guy. He's always like, oh, he's like the guy who's trying to put Dutch angles in it. Yeah. He's like he, he's like a weird He's like a very unusual Quentin Tarantino guy going, I'm going to make an Oscar winning porn. That, that's pretty, pretty much, much it. He's just very misogynistic and like super fucking annoying. And he slut shamed his uh, girlfriend. Like, come on, it's just sex. That's what they do. Then she like, I want to be in the movie. And then all of a sudden he's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then he starts crying uncontrollably. In the shower, great. which it's is great. hilarious. Like, it is probably one of the funniest and darkest moments in a horror movie. Where yeah. Because he had to watch his girl get railed, pretty much. Okay, back on topic. Back on topic. So, it, so after they film three scenes of the movie, you know, they're hanging out in the night. Pearl starts picking them off. Howard's like, oh, we're looking for Pearl. He starts picking them off. Yeah. Eventually, it comes down to he wants, she wants to imprison Mia because Mia is like the... The symbol of her youth. Yeah. She wants that youth back. You know what I mean? Eventually, Mia survives, picks them off, survives the massacre, and then her future is, well, will be explored in the third movie. But we're not going to talk about the third movie. Tonight, we're going to talk about the prequel. Because this movie was filmed at the exact same time as X, man. Yeah. So, Ty West and Mia Goth wrote the script to Pearl um, when they had to do their two-week quarantine before they could start filming X in New Zealand. Yes. So somehow they got the funding secured right at the same time. So um, in addition to having Mia Goth, some of like the intimacy coordinator from X plays Pearl's mom. Ruth. Ruth. Yep. Um, so essentially Pearl is just about Pearl's murderous awakening. Yes. Um, her husband is off fighting World War One, so she's living on a farm with her parents. Um, w W one. Uh, Sorry, I had that ready to go and it didn't work out. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Keep going. All right. Um, so she's miserable. Her father, I think her father had the Spanish flu, and it just 
wrecked him. It wrecked him, but it's kind of weird that they put that into the not weird, but it's interesting they put that in the movie as a parallelism to yeah, uh, uh, to COVID because it like this movie kind of just peaks at COVID, but it never like hammers you over the head over with it. Yeah, so in the context of the film, the Spanish flu is about to resurge. Um, so they talk about wearing masks and being around people and whatnot. Um, but Pearl lives with her parents. Her dad is in a wheelchair. He cannot talk. I don't think he can move any of his limbs. No. Yeah. So he's completely reliant on Pearl and Ruth to take care of him. Or more likely more Pearl. It, it's more Pearl, which Ruth I think is kind of creepy. Ruth just like peaced out a little bit. Like, but anyways, so so true. yeah. Pearl, uh, so the whole point of the movie, Pearl is auditioning for a dance troupe, and sh she's super focused on it because she has to get out of her town. She needs to get away. She which, wants to be a star. Which is hysterical because it's just a kind of an open mic level church circuit show. Yeah, it's just a church group, <laughs> like, when... In the state of Texas. Like, no, like, probably, like, in six cities in Texas. Just six days. Like, they probably aren't even leaving the county. Oh, that's horrible. I know. Like, I thought it was, like, statewide. No. Cal oh. You're so big. Texas is. Texas is huge. I know. That's why I thought it was statewide. Yeah, no. They're going to hit, like, maybe a few. They're going to hit for a few cities. They're probably not going to leave the county. Yeah. But, yeah, but I kind of found it funny. Like, they, it was that. She was taking it that serious. She was taking it so seriously. Well, we, we'll see why soon. But yeah. Keep going. So, essentially... Pearl has a psychotic break during all of this and starts murdering everybody. Yeah. Um, because if she can't be a star, then it's kind of it's just like it's like her make it or break it. Like I have to do this. Yeah. Thing. And she thought one of the biggest points of this is so Howard, who's off fighting World War II, Howard comes from a very wealthy family, and she thought Howard was going to take her away from the farm. Turns out Howard loves being a farm boy. Um, so he doesn't want to leave. Howard. God I know. Damn Howard. He had one job. Selfish. He had one job. He, he totally green anchored her. He did. Green anchors is the place to but be. Here's the but thing. with murder. But with that, murder. That farm is nice. Yeah, but she wants she wants the she wants to be on Rodeo Drive, not at a rodeo. Yeah, but like I'm just saying. I would really like that. Minus the alligator. You the just want to be away from people. I hate people. That's, That's why. You want to be on it. Like, literally, like, sometimes I feel like COVID worked out best for you oh, a little bit. Oh, so did. Because you were like, what? I actually now can say I don't want to be around people and have a good reason. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, it was like, you, you were like, me, I'm an introvert, extrovert. I was like freaking out having a mental no, breakdown. Was great. I was having, I was having a pearl mental breakdown. I was you just know, sitting there on the couch reading. You were over there like Howard, just like, I love the farm laugh. You know, totally just whatever. But anyways, so yeah, so she, spoiler alert, she doesn't get the role. Obviously. And she takes it out on everybody. Yeah. All right. And she pretty much, she murdered her uh, father, murdered the mother. Oh, the mom Mur gets set on fire. Dude. So fucking cool. Dude, she, she took forever to die in that movie. I felt bad. Like, yeah. everybody else at least got a quick one. She cheats on her husband. That's notable. With the projectionist. With, yeah. She also has this weird, like, dance fantasy moment with a scarecrow. Yeah, no fantasy moment. She came. It was fucking gross. Yeah, she, yeah, she danced with this uh, scarecrow in the middle of the, the cornrows, and then she got on top of the corn. She, uh, she got on top of the scarecrow, felt up the cob, and, got, and went going. That's what happened. But screamed, I'm married first, and then climbed on top of him. It was weird. Yeah. It, it was, was really it was, weird. But what, what, what the best part was is, like, one of the nice little imageries of the movie is that it looked like the, the scarecrow from Wizard of it Oz. Kind of, yeah, it no, kind of it did. did. <laughs> yeah, it did. I will pull up a picture right now. And scarred I want to see here. it. It looked fucking weird. Dude, it was that. It looked fucking but weird. But that was kind of one of the nice things about that movie. So let's get into the influences of this movie. Yeah. Uh, but real quick, just to tie up the ending. So after she kills everybody, she poses with her mom and dad eating a maggot-infested pig. And, and Howard <laughs> comes home from war at that same exact moment. And the, the one thing if you do, like, if you do not watch this movie, watch 
the last like two minutes of the movie, she's just standing there and smiling at Howard. Yeah, that's it. It looks like super forced. Like she starts crying at one point. Oh my god. Yeah. So I think they put her in that red dress just because of like how red she can make her face. Yeah. Just to like illustrate that, because like there was times I thought like she's gonna burst a blood vessel in her eye. Yeah, I thought so too. Oh my god. Well, but let's talk about those influences. So as we mentioned. Wizard of Oz was one of the big influences of this movie because uh, as opposed to the first movie that had the color saturation of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this movie had the color saturation of the Wizard of Oz. Like really bright, like technicolor yeah. saturation. It, it looked like a live action Disney movie. Like, like it just, it, it was a very beautifully stunning movie. And it even had the music. Oh, yeah, yeah, It's fucking weird. Like, think think the 1930s, 40s MGM movie. Yeah, and it also pulled inspirations from Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Oh, very much. I so, guess. yeah, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane is a movie that came out, I think, late 60s, I want to say. Late 60s, yeah. It's with Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Uh, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford are sisters when they're younger. Betty Davis was the child vaudeville star. And then when they become adults, it switches. And Betty Davis can't find any movie work. And Joan Crawford becomes the star. And there's just this bubbling resentment that... Are you talking about the movie or the behind the scenes of that movie? I both. (laughs) Um, So whatever happened to Baby Jane, it opens with Joan Crawford's character being run over by a car. By Betty Davis, which renders her paralyzed, and obviously she cannot do any movie work because, let's be real, in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, it was not uh, handicapped accessible. Even the most powerful man in the 1940s put a blanket over his lap, a.k.a. uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yeah. (laughs) He was like... The world's falling apart, but nobody can know I'm in a wheelchair. And so the movie is essentially Betty Davis who's having delusions of being still being a like child vaudeville star taking care of Joan Crawford. And there's just this resentment between Betty Davis to Joan Crawford. And she tries to kill off Joan Crawford so she can become a movie star. Again, is this the movie or the behind the scenes of the movie? It's both. It's both. Um, it, it's both. If you've ever seen the, the Ryan Murphy's miniseries, the feud, it, there's a big story behind the filming of that movie. The two stars, Hated, hated each, each other. other with a burning passion. So, like, if you ever felt like, wow, this feels real when you watch that movie. Oh, it was. They fucking hated so each other. So was. But, okay, so why do you think they, so why do you think uh, they use that Technicolor MGM 1940s aspect of the film for this movie? What, what, what do you, how do you think that adds to the horror? Movies? It makes you uncomfortable. Very much. I was visibly uncomfortable. Because it, it's such a stunning set yeah but then you're seeing her like fucking kill somebody with a pitchfork oh my god which yeah. one of the greatest kills in the movie which we'll talk about in the next segment for best kills but wow that was a good shot and, like even in the opening first two minutes she's like dancing around the farm having a great old time and then she stabs a duck yeah like, which oh so it's visually stunning and then you see her just kill a duck right but, then and there but then she goes and feeds it to the alligator which that's the brilliance of that scene is that she does something that looks cold-blooded yeah. and merciless but she's feeding sense. an alligator so it's like it's not so cold-blooded that she killed the goose or the duck yeah but it was the manner and the it, it's a really the the movie which i always say movies uh you know, not, they're not always supposed to make you feel good. Some of them are supposed to make you feel bad. Like yeah. some, of, some of them are supposed to make you feel kind of like, oh, Christ. And this is kind of one of those movies. Not to, It doesn't do it too much. But I think having that familiar, happy-go-lucky kind of uh, atmosphere to the movie about a woman who just fucking loses her mind. Yeah. I think it really is just a very disturbing backdrop. It is. Now, besides, so we talked about all the happiness and wonder that was in this movie. Is there any other, is there a horror element to this movie, do you think, that they pulled from at any time? So, I think the horror they took from whatever happened to Baby Jane. That's the one? Yeah. Okay, okay I just wanted to make sure. I kind of thought it was that one, which, you know, it, it's interesting because that's exploitation. 
It is. Which in, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre was that kind of exploitation movie where it was more about violence and all that stuff. So it's yeah. a very interesting kind of parallelism of that. So yeah. We're, I'm very I'm very excited to see what they do next with these movies. But let's go over to our next segment, uh, Best Kills. Uh, so Best Kills for Pearl. Um, my Lord, I got to say, the pitchfork to the face is pretty cool. That was. That was, like, because I love it because, like, the two prongs, the they go past his face, but the one goes, like, directly down the throat. Doesn't that go into his eyes, or am I thinking of another movie? You're think you're thinking of um the first movie, X. Oh, my bad. Yes, she does do a pitchfork kill now. Yeah, one, which it's kind of weird. The pitchfork is kind of her thing, which I like. I kind of like that. Wait, doesn't she kill? No, the last person was an X. But I kind of want her to. I want her weapon of choice to be the pitchfork because it's like yeah. Jason has the machete, uh, Freddy has the razor claws, Michael Myers has the butcher knife, and then Pearl. That's Pearl a has a pitchfork, pitchfork, which I love. And I, she can also use it as a cane because she's like a geriatric killer. Yeah, and she dances with it. Oh yeah, she does. She dances a lot with yeah. it. Like there is a certain affinity she has for the pitchfork. Yeah, and it's a part of her farm life. So I just think it's such a good tool. But I do love it when that thing goes right through the guy's mouth. Like yeah, and then he just, which I love. They don't show it up close. You just see it far away. And you see the thing sticking from the ground. It's just kind of. Yeah. which i love that so much what was one of your favorite kills i love the confrontation with the mom um how the mom gets kind of pushed Ooh, yeah, yeah, towards yeah, yeah, the yeah, fireplace yeah. so her skirt catches on fire because clothes in 1918 were not flame retardant nope and then she just nope. throws her mom down the stairs which you know <laughs> And she doesn't die no. for a while. She <laughs> holds on. <laughs> she she hangs in there at an uncomfortable rate. Because like yeah. every because like every time you're like, okay, she's dead in the in the cellar, right? And then you look at then she goes back to the cellar and you hear <gasps> and you're like, oh fuck, she dead yet. Yeah. But part of that could have been Pearl hallucinating. I think I think it was the more to suffer. Because mm -hmm. you would talk to her sometimes. She would be like She'd be like, because she threw back that one line, like, now you know how it feels when I look at you and how disappointed I am. So, like, she threw it right back at her. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but she also hallucinated that the mom was singing to her. And then again, yeah, she, you know, she also fucked the scarecrow. So, I mean, there's, exactly. a, there's a lot, there's a lot left up to what actually happened in that movie. So I get yeah. that. Um, another one of my favorite kills, and it's not even kills, it's more of her just cleaning up the evidence. Just her getting rid of all the stuff at the end of the movie. Yeah. You have that nice little, like, yeah. you, you ever see that? What's that one Disney princess where all the birds and everything help her do her chores? Cinderella. Yeah, it was kind of that. Like, she's yeah. throwing the severed heads at the yeah, alligator. It was. And the alligator's jumping up and eating it for her. <laughs> Which I love that we, Theta, Theta. I love that she named it. I hope it's the same alligator. Uh, I'd like to think it is. No, because remember they showed alligator eggs at one point. During oh the movie? yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's probably not. I hope it is though. I just really want they to be. I just want Theta to be Pearl's ride or die. Even if Howard, you know, technically he wrote and then died. I love how because he had sex with her and then she died. He died because his heart couldn't take it anymore. In Pay X. attention. In X. In X. In X. But. But yeah, no, I just loved it. It had that kind of like spring cleaning. Like mm -hmm. she's getting rid of all the bodies. She's just happily chucking them into the water. The, I loved it. It was it's such yeah. a good have good feeling. And that there was something else I was gonna bring up. Even the so in between the murders, when you just see her like just start to mentally deteriorate. Yeah. Oh my god! It's like you're waiting, and you're like, "Oh, she's gonna fucking kill the shit out of this." Person. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Because like the one thing Mia Goth is good at is just looking like she's in pain all the time. Yeah. Like she looks like she's gonna just. The movie is more of a psychological killing movie because of just how well she can act. Yeah. Because like, like I felt like if you got someone who could act regularly, the movie still would be good, but it wouldn't have that element of psychologicalness mm -mm. that she brings to it because. Dude, like I said, we thought she was going to burst blood vessels at some point. Yeah. Because she, her face was, was scarlet red at some time. It was. And she had, like, a few really intense monologues. And they needed 
they needed to cast someone who could like do that justice and Mia Goth did. Well, because you brought that up, I don't want to go too far into this because this is our next segment, but I do want to bring up that the climactic monologue was actually one shot. It's a six to seven minute monologue. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which, but which amazing. I mean, I, I mean doing that kind of stuff is not easy at all to no, do a one so shot monologue, you know, cause I have to do play monologues. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you do a play, it's a one shot technically, but you have no choice. Yeah. If you flub over a word, you just have to like roll with it. Yeah. But they're like those guys, T.I. West, you know, he's like a technical, or T.I. West, I always call him T.I. West. <laughs> you know, he's a technical guy. Yeah. And he is. so like, you know, that they, and Mia Goth obviously loves being this character. Yeah. So her character, her acting in Pearl is better than X, but I still like X more though. I think because I think I think we were watching no not to say that she wasn't great at X. She was phenomenal at X. I think it was just good to see her be one character. Yeah. And it was. give all her energy into one character. Yeah. Like I felt like I was getting peaks of, of her both of her characters in X. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like we got the Avengers film first. Yeah. And now we're gonna get all the one-off movies that build up to the Avengers. Mm -hmm. They did it backwards. You know? So it's like now we like Pearl, I got to know Pearl. Pearl is fucking torture. Yeah, Pearl, I feel bad for. I also uh I mean, don't I don't understand Howard. Like, dude, she murdered like your sister, your mother in law, your father in law, and you're still like, Yep, I'm gonna say. The fucking pussy was good, I bet. I'm gonna say that right now. No, no, listen, guys, back me up. There are times where we've all been in bad relationships, right? Where it's like, don't look at me like that. I'm just being honest with the audience here. Oh, my God. And sometimes you're like, okay, this fucking bitch is crazy. But it's good. All right? And maybe Pearl's got that good. She's got that good good. She banged a, square, a scarecrow. She banged the projectionist. She was banging everybody in that movie. All right? She would probably bang the sister-in-law. We don't know what would happen. Yeah. She wanted to. She wanted to bang me a goth and X. Well, because she would essentially be banging herself. Herself, yes, yes. Which would be like the weirdest, like metaphoric masturbation. Yeah. 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 But my point is, I'm like, she has. She had that good, good. Okay. Macaroni in the pot. You know what I mean? That's what Pearl had. You're mixing together two Cardi B songs, and it's really weird. I'm just saying, she had the macaroni in the pot. All right. And that's how Pearl got it. And that, and you know, Howard came back from 19, came back from World War One. all right? The first war where the whole entire war fought each other, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. You think he wanted to start all over? Yeah, I would have. And then, can we, you know, he would probably have been like, all right, maybe they deserved it. Maybe I'm going to get, I don't know. Point is, let's not judge Howard, okay? No, we're still going to judge Howard. And maybe, maybe Howard... Took his vows seriously. In sickness and health. In richer and poor. Okay. So if I go on a murder spree, you're not going to get freaked out. Listen, I'm going to love you forever, but I'm obviously going to turn you in. See? Okay. But no, I'm going to do it so you can get help. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to do it because you can get help. Oh, thank you. All right. And then I'll I'll visit you Hannibal Lecter style. Like, I'll just come down. You'll be reading a book. Oh, Jesse and I'm like, oh, okay. I would get so much reading done. Yeah, I love to call myself <laughs> Clarice. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. Oh, Clarice. I mean, uh, hello, Jesse. Out of the two of us, you kind of are like Clarice. I am know? very much like Clarice. And I do mean that as an insult. I'm it, it, obviously you're talking about the Jodie Foster one. Then. Yeah. Yeah, I Hence, don't want to be the Jodie Foster. But one. you are. I want to be the fucking badass. Uh, God blanket on her name. What was her name? God. The second movie, Hannibal. Who, who played Jodie Foster's role? Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. She fucking kicks ass. She's a badass. She can give a fuck in that movie. She was she was like a dog with a bone, man. She wasn't gonna stop until she got her, man. The Joe, the Jodie Foster one. She's like, I, I don't know what happened to do. You know, she's like, she throw me nuts on that. Are you done? I'm done. Done. I'm done. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, besides me referring to myself, Clarice, let's talk about the biggest what the fuck moments in the movie Pearl. That dance sequence. It's beautiful. Yeah. It was like it was like if Dirty Dancing ended with 
uh, Jennifer Grey mounting Patrick Swayze in a cornfield. Ew. What? I'm not talking about the scarecrow dance sequence. I'm talking about the audition dance. Oh, that sequence. was messed up. It yeah. was. So she's dancing and doing her audition. It turns into like a vaudeville stage. Um, and then just war activity happens so it, behind it, it, her. It, she's kind of like blowing this up more than she thinks it is. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, like the quality of the show that she's putting on has like a bigger budget and it's in her head. Like, People are fighting in the war. Soldiers are on stage dancing with her, even though there's nobody on stage. Yeah. It was just really fucking weird. It was very, it was, there was a certain degree of like mentalness to that. Cause like, and then when, and I love like how, again, this is just an open mic church, six show tour in Texas where they're probably not going to leave the county. And I love how they have the little casting table and they're just complete. Yeah, Next. they're just sitting there expressionless. Next. <laughs> Next. And they're like, yeah, we already have like four brunettes on the dance team. Uh, we need a blonde. Next. Like, they're just like jerks. Put a wig on her. Put a blonde wig on her. I don't think that would look good. Okay, listen. Mia Goff does not look good as a blonde. Well, she dyed her eyebrows. I know she dyed she her dyed eyebrows. dyed the hair. Mm. All right, listen, let me tell you something. It's. That's why it's easier to be a serial killer when you're a brunette than a blonde. And here's the reason why I say that, okay? Because you just get that. What's that thing they, they put in their hair in the movie Outsiders? The book? Peroxide. You put peroxide, you're suddenly you're blonde. That's not how that works. Yes, you put peroxide, no. you suddenly go blonde. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, you turn blonde. No, you don't. I used to have blonde specks of hair because I have peroxide on my fingers all the time. Okay, we're going to test this theory after the podcast. Fine. Fine. Do you have peroxide? Yeah, though you get peroxide for it. It's always good to have. Okay, whatever. Yeah, put it in my hair. If I have blonde flit, if I if I look like Justin Timberlake, nineteen ninety seven, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great day. Oh, it'll be so great. It'll look like if Justin Timberlake decided to be to not dance at all and just eat Snickers. All the other, <laughs> excuse me. All the other black blah, blah, Backstreet Boys are like dancing. All right. So, anyways, let's go on. Yeah, I okay. thought Justin Timberlake was in sync. Ah, he was in sync. Yeah. Son of a bitch. All right. Anyways, ah, so let's uh, let's let's go over to uh, well, I can get to my what the fuck moment. I don't think. Did you have your? You, you, yeah, you, I you, did you, mine. Okay, good. So then, my biggest what the fuck moment of this movie was uh, the monologue. <laughs> like I felt bad for the sister in law because because she gives this beautiful six to seven minute monologue, <laughs> and, and she's, she's talking yeah. about how. She's happy that their infant child died. How she killed her mom and her dad. Yeah. She killed them for Jackson's. Like, she's just admitting a shitload of stuff. I mean, how she mad at Howard for moving him out to a farm yeah. and all that stuff. And, like, it's so crazy because she's admitting all this really fucked up shit. But for six to seven minutes, you don't see the sister's So you're just face. picturing it. <laughs> and she, you could just picture her being like, yeah, just imagine if somebody is just pouring out the most incriminating information mm -hmm. on you, and you don't, and you know that you're not as cool. Yeah, yeah, because and and oh, also you had the starring role that she was wanting the whole movie. Yeah, so the sister in law does the audition with Pearl. The sister in law is very privileged. She has blonde hair, fits the role. Yeah, and and basically she gets the role. Pearl's fucking pissed off. Yeah. And then she goes into the monologue. <laughs> and it's just like, it's almost to the point where the sister's like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to get killed. Which she does, because it ends with her like being like, well, I'm going to go. I hope, I, you know, I wish you all the best. And then Pearl just slowly walks yeah. at her with an axe and so finishes her great. up. great. And just fucking murders her. And then it goes into the Disney sequence where she's just spring cleaning everybody's dead bodies yep. out. Yep. And I, I think it's like the most messed up moment. Now, to go into the trivia, here's an interesting trivia since we're kind of already going into this. I want to see what your thoughts on this. So many people online are calling this uh, Joker for women. What are your thoughts? Oh, it makes total sense. It, it, go into it. What what, what parallelisms? Because you've seen the Joker. So what parallelisms are you catching that fits that? Pearl is very relatable. She is very restricted. 
Okay. And she loses it. Sometimes people just want to lose it and get what they want. Makes sense. I mean, yeah. the Joker does that too. Yeah, that's what Joker yeah. for women. It's just now it's a female character, so it's more relatable. Pearls, Pearl is for, is Pearl's Joker's for dudes. Or no, Joker's Pearl for dudes. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, is he? But yeah, because no, and what's so good is like Joker has his dance on the stairs. Yeah, and then Pearl has multiple dances everywhere she in the movie. She dances a lot in it's, that movie. Yeah, she dances a lot for a homicidal murderer. You know what? I I get it. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to let loose and dance. She had a crazy week. She was auditioning she for shows. She's watching stag films with a stranger. You know, she's cheating on her husband. She bangs a scarecrow. Yep. It was a yep. really wild movie. Like, if you were to compound all those events into one, like, paragraph, it's mm-hmm. like, holy shit, that was a week for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, and by the way, that stag movie's real. I love how T.I. West is like, I gotta make one. <laughs> no, I gotta, I gotta find one to show. Which is hilarious because, like, in Werewolves of London, uh, there's a scene where the two main characters are in a theater watching a stag film. And it was directed, movie's directed by John Landis, but he also directed the stag film that was in there. It wasn't a stag film, it was ridiculous. But this, this guy's like making out with this girl on the couch, and then some guy kicks through the door, Hey, you're sleeping with my wife. Like, they're kind of giving this, uh, and then he got on the couch, reveals the girl. This isn't your wife. And then the guy's like, oh, I, I'm sorry. And then the rest of the scene just devol- devolves into them trying to figure out who's going to pay for the door. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, like, as the scene is going on, you're listening to the stag film in the back, and there's zero sex happening. It's just them trying to figure out who's going to pay for the door. And it is so fucking funny. It's so funny. You're like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, we got a comment. Oh, it was, sorry, man. We Let's see. Uh, I... I know not of which you speak. The movie's name is Pearl. Yes. Yeah. The name is Pearl. This is Ty's dad, by the way. Oh, hi. Hi. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have. I. You don't have to see the movie X to understand this movie because the way Ti Ty West made these movies, he made them so that they complement each other, but they're not. But it's not vital. Uh, one second. Yeah. How can you bring up Werewolves of London and not mention Warren Zeon? I love that song. <laughs> Actually, I did the. No, I literally just did uh, the roast of um, Halloween, and I was the werewolf, and I this was the song I went up to. Oh, you did? Yeah, I love Werewolves of London. Uh, okay. Oh, Werewolves of London. I love this song. Uh, but anyways, no, I, I always found it funny that this song didn't appear in the movie Werewolves in London. It didn't. So they used every movie, or every song involving moons and werewolves, uh-huh. and then they just didn't use this song. And they know they did it on purpose just to mess with us. Yeah, they just so did. It's like, that is just such a crazy thing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. But yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree. This was a, like, the dancing, the the killing, the mother killing. Yeah. There was a mother killing. Yep. Uh, a killing of a hero. Like, in the case, Joker kills uh, uh, Robert De Niro's character. In this case, she kills the projectionist. Yeah. You know, the projectionist was kind of like her gateway to the life. Yeah. Because, like, she was going to go to Paris with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was about to leave Howard, like, not, high and dry. I mean, here's the thing, She was, even, she was about to piece the hell out of there. But Howard didn't live up to his expectations with her. She, it would, he, no. He green anchored her. I know, I'm yeah, green. Yeah, because, like, after we got married, if you were like, all right, we're moving back to Youngstown, do you <laughs> think... I would be like, yeah, okay, no. no. Youngstown is great to say you're from, but not live there. Not live there. Just so you know what? I get her reasoning for wanting to leave Howard. Because if I were in that situation, peace out, motherfucker. Peace out, motherfucker. <laughs> so you're just going to go off and bang a projectionist. <laughs> that means I can stay in Columbus, then oh yeah. Oh my god. Well, what? I'm, so, I'm so glad that there's an asterisk to our vows. Two years into the marriage, I learned today. You know what? Youngstown is a deal breaker. I love how you're like, I love you so much. But you ever bring Vic to Youngstown, I will crash this wet, this marriage down into fire. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not living that close to certain people. All right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough, indeed. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so let's go over. So let's do some quick trivia about the movie. And then uh, we'll go on to magazine. So before we move on off this trivia point, uh, I wanted to point out. So we had the... So, so the mother killing, the hero killing, and then someone who's just like uh, she kills the sister-in-law who's just like her, right? Yeah. 
the Joker kills the one employee that's like him. Remember he kills the guy in the apartment? Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. movie has a really good parallel. And like in the in the grand illusions of thinking their lives are better than what they are well, at times. But I mean the Joker had like a diagnosable schizophrenia. Yeah. Pearl was just delusional. Pearl was just like Pearl is just very immature. But you're in saying like, women can't be diagnosed with this? No, I'm, I'm just with it. Fuck you. <laughs> I know where you sleep. Yeah, are you, are you saying that women are just emotional? No, I'm saying you know what? I know. I'm trolling. Keep keep going. I'm you, trolling. No, no. Yeah, I get no. Go Sarah ahead. Sarah has a d- degrees in psychology, so she's very smart with this to the point where she has ruined some movies because she's like, "Here's why this is not plausible," and then mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh yeah, that is not plausible. That's nope. so fucking stupid." But we'll get into we won't we'll get into that. We'll run. I want to save the last minute, couple uh, last three minutes to hit up some of these uh, topics. So, okay, so, uh, so trivia. So, like we talked about, uh, the birth, the the intimacy coordinator uh, played Ruth, um, and also learned Germany in a hurry so she could be in this movie as well. Oh shit, her German was, was like very was good, very very good. Like it was really good. Like. Like I, I thought she was. I thought the the actress was from Germany. I thought so too. So yeah, no, it was really good. Um, let's see. Okay, we all do it. We got filmed simultaneously. And uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Look at this. To prepare for the tone of the movie, the director asked Mia Goth to watch whatever happened to Baby Jane and was the loss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no, I, I wasn't sure if you were. I wasn't sure if you knew that or you were, uh, or you or you figured that out on your own. No, I read it. it. I read oh, okay. it. Okay. No, I think you're that smart. You could just look and dissect into a movie. I, am I feel like you're like one of those people. Like you like how some chefs they can eat something and they can tell you all the individual ingredients that uh-huh. went into doing it. Like that's the intelligence I think you have with movies sometimes. No, I. I but it's just me blowing you up because I love you. Okay. Uh, okay. The the pornographic film shown in the movie is called Pearl is a Free Ride, a real vintage stag film. The film's production is the subject of some debate. It serviced in the 1970s and was at one point uh, sold by a shady distributor as a hardcore D.W. Griffin from 1915. While the silent film's historian Kevin uh, Brunelow has uh, posted that it was made in the 1920s. I, I just loved watching that movie because it was so funny. Because like, because it was just like they had that old time. You're like. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the moving. But it was... And then he just started banging two girls. And it was, just like, a really weird, like, they're driving, and he's like, hey, you want to bang in the field? Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, it was just so matter-of-fact. I mean, yeah. I mean, they, it, it shows you that porn acting hasn't came a long way. No, I was going to say. <laughs> it just, it like, has not. Like, everybody makes fun of the whole... Help, stepbrother, I'm stuck in the dryer. And, that, and then this hitchhiker is trying to get two people to pull over. He's like, hey, before we go on the rest of this trip, do you want to bang in the field? <laughs> so I, I always love porn logic in movies. Okay, let's. It's so funny. Okay, moving okay. on. To all right, right, all right. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so. Those were the couple. Those were uh, some of the trivia facts that I wanted to bring up with this. Like I said, I thought they were quite interesting. I wanted to share with everybody on that one. So uh, let's uh, spend the rest of the time talking about the next movie. So the next movie will be called Vaccine. So this movie flashes forward. So real quick, X takes place what nineteen seventy? It's like late seventies. Late seventies, okay. And then Pearl takes place in nineteen eighteen. Yeah. So this is like. So, uh, just to give you guys a a fresher, X is like the Avengers film. And Pearl and Maxine are kind of like the individual Captain America Thor movie. Okay? Like, we're going to learn about these characters before we go any further. So, we got to learn about Pearl, who was kind of the big heavy, the monster of X. So, now we're going to go with Maxine. Now, this movie takes place in approximately 1985. So, it's after the events of X. Mm -hmm. So, she's the sole... Survivor of the X Massacre, and uh, now she's going to be going to Hollywood, and we're going to see her still trying to make it big. So, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what do you think? Because 1985 is an interesting year for movies, in my opinion, because I have a big 80s fan. Yeah, that is like, like between 84 and 86, there was just an explosion of films. So, 
because I'm not a huge 80s person. I think maybe it's like she's going to try to become a movie star, but I think something's going to happen and she's going to go head to head with her parents. I really think something ah, like that. Ah, yes, is yes. So why don't you explain, uh, elaborate on that? Why will she go big? Why, why is, would her parents be a factor? So throughout the movie X, you see a, a TV show and a radio show of this evangelical pastor preaching about evil and all this shit. Joel Olstein with a Texas accent. Pretty much. Um, and at the end of the movie, you find out that is Pearl's dad. Yeah. So, and... I really think because she, because she, <clears throat> she is doing everything that he's preaching against. He's going to hear about the massacre that happened in X mm -hmm. and somehow they're going to like meet. What if, do you think? Like, what if she actually gets like a big breakout role and she gets, he gets the congregation to boycott the film in that order to save it imagine like she comes that close to becoming famous what's yeah. so interesting about this movie it's gonna feel like a sequel to pearl because again pearl and mia pearl plays mia goth and maxine is played by mia goth there's this weird parallelism between the two they're the same person but they're yeah. not it's just a it's just a metaphor you know so she you could tell she has that same hunger to mm -hmm. be famous so let me ask you this do you think Maxine, now that she has kind of got a bit of a, she was she was killing in self defense in in um, I don't think she's gonna become like a slasher. Well, do you think? But I don't want her to become a slasher. I mean, think about it. Even Scream, they said you know fucked up shit can happen to you. It messes with you. So what if this is the thing that messes with her? What if like yeah. what if she comes so close to the mountaintop? All right, just imagine. She gets the biggest movie in Hollywood that's going to be coming out that year, right? Right. It's filmed. It's in the can. It's amazing. It's it's premiere week, all right? And if this movie goes off without a hitch, she is a star. Her life is completely set up. Yeah, She but... wins. And then all of a sudden, you get this uh, the, the Father's Church congregation threatening the success of that film. No, because then if she starts killing them, then she won't be a star. I'm not saying she gets caught. She... Okay, in horror movies, they most likely get caught. I know. Well, in the end, they'll get caught. But I'm about to say, I'm about to say, like you know, Jason doesn't run out in the beginnings of the Friday Thirteenth movie. Hey, <laughs> guys, just hang out for a little bit. I'm gonna come back and murder you all in the face. Okay, break. Yeah, you know I mean, like I think she'll pick them off one by one. Maybe I think maybe her first kill will be an accident. Maybe. Yeah, you know I mean, like maybe yeah. she gets into a heated debate with a congregation. She kills somebody, and maybe someone says like, "How much do you want this?" How bad do you want this? I, I think, think she's going to start slashing. But you don't think she has the same psychosis as Pearl? Like, no. That, really? No. I'm getting that vibe. I'm not. Maybe not like I a, need to rewatch it. Maybe not like a Corey Michael Myers where they're, where Michael Myers is choking Corey and they look in each other's eyes to say daddy. Wait, they, they didn't say daddy. But like they kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know they want to say No, they didn't say daddy. But anyways, they, they, there's a moment they look at each other's eyes and they're the same person. You don't think, like, you know. No, I. I really don't think she's going to be the one doing the killing. Okay, so if she's not the one doing the killing, will you you think the church congregation will? Yeah. Okay, do you think this is probably because you want them to be the killers? You oh, want yeah. them to be the villains? Yeah. Yep, there we go. I'm sorry, we're in an era right now where religious people are batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's more plausible. Plus, this does take place during the satanic panic. It does. So, I mean, this would... So they're more likely to go after her... Yeah. And her go after them. Yes. So we're going to have... So, okay. So this will be kind of interesting. It'll be kind of like the entire third act of uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Just with me and Goth, essentially. Yeah. I'm fine with now, that. Now, has, has Tia, has Ty West said uh, what his influences are no. for the new Maxine? No. They haven't even filmed it. I don't yeah. think the script is done. Which is kind of weird because, like, when the first movie came out, X came in the theaters, yeah. the post credit scene was the trailer to Pearl. And but no was, one knew it was filmed. It was so great. Like, everybody was like, hey, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, like, I I just always want Ty West just to make nine movies in advance and then just keep pulling them off the shelf. I think it would be perfect. It's hilarious. Like, he's already, I think he's already had his whole career we haven't known, we don't know it yet. That's fair. Like, right now he's filming five secret movies as he's filming this movie. I'm fine with that. And then he's just like, every year, he's like, do I need, do I need another <laughs> award on my shelf? Oh, yeah, I do. 
Naples, hey Sydney. But yeah, anyways, uh, so let's get back to it. So, I mean, I, I think that would be interesting. So, okay, so we have two predictions. We have A, the satanic panic, uh, uh, scaring the congregation into uh, fighting and killing, uh, maybe killing people on the set of the film. Or, maybe. Or, or, you know, they're trying to do something, maybe even frame them. You know yeah. I mean? Something to hurt the, the, the success of the movie. Yeah. Because I... Because I feel like that's the way to go. To put her in a movie that is going to be a surefire success. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you have so much on the line and so many life-changing things, yeah. you will kill for those. Yeah. You will kill. I you don't know, think she'll you, kill. I don't think she'll kill, I but I think she'll, she'll kill. kill in self-defense. Maybe. Sydney. I mean, look what she did to per in Pearl. I mean, it was her or Pearl. It was her or Pearl. True. Well, Pearl fucking fucked herself up because didn't, didn't she shoot the shotgun and get thrown back like nine feet? She did. <laughs> so she funny. did. I, listen, I don't know. I, what isn't there a word for like making fun of old people and how they get hurt? Probably. Is. Like it's like patricide where it's like you it, it's killing the father and the father figure, but then there's like a, a word for like make, making fun of old people. Most there likely. has to be a word. But dude, oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> dude watching because she was like i'll kill you yeah she, and she just flew backwards yeah. like, it was just beautiful like but anyway so oh uh, so okay so we have the satanic panic mm -hmm. and we have um we have uh, my prediction is i think she will snap i think she will mm -hmm. she'll have a moment where she's like you know what i it's it's our us and we'll go from there yeah now what do you think there's any other elements of the previous films that could play an important role in this? Um, I don't know. I, you know, because here's the reason why I say that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, when it comes to movies that, like, kind of, let, that are, like, the third movie of a trilogy, they always try to bring back as much as they can. Like, there has to be elements of Pearl that are going to appear in this movie. I think there will be, but I think it'll be more PTSD. PTSD? Yeah. Wait, okay, so, like, let me ask you this. Do you think maybe, um... Trying to think, maybe that, maybe that church choir, uh, maybe the church choir tour is touring around oh my still. God. <laughs> They're just touring around after almost seventy years. You know, it could be touring around, so that'd be a nice little element to bring back. Maybe Theta. Maybe what if me and God's here go back and keeps Theta? I don't think that'll happen. You don't think she keeps Theta? No. I love that Theta. You mean Theta? Come here, Theta. Yeah, uh, but now here's a, I mean, basically she is essentially the Sally. Of Texas Chainsaw Massacre when it comes to this movie. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my next question. Do you think maybe that will boost her fame? Because keep in mind, the cops, they had the camera. I think They it, watched the camera in the end. I don't know. I don't think it will. Because we're about to be in like a conservative state in a conservative time. I don't think it would make her more famous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it, I think Ronald Reagan is still president at this time. Mm -hmm. So you got Ronald Reagan, you have a conservative president. Yeah. You know that. Not to say that politics play a big role in this, but you got to look at the time frame of what the movie is yeah. to understand the history. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But do you think she'll be in California? Or do you think she'll still be in Texas? She has no, to be in Texas. she's going to be in Hollywood. The, the tra not the trailer, the teaser that they showed, it was like the name Maxine, but like on the Hollywood Hills instead of Hollywood. Okay. So it's going to be set in California. Okay. What movie? Now, let me ask you this. What movie, what do you think the movie will be about? Do you think it'll be like a parody or a spoof of an actual movie that exists? Like, you think like maybe she'll be in like, uh, trying to, I'm trying to think of something good that she could be in. I don't even think she's going to be filming a movie. I think she's just going to be a struggling actor. Okay. I don't think she's going to be filming something or being famous. So you, so you just think it'll just be auditions? Yeah. Ooh, then what then what in you what would the horror element be? I don't know. Do you think like maybe maybe she'll go crazy and she'll kill off? What if she kills off every other person that's on the audition thing? I don't think she she's whittles gonna, it down. No, she's not gonna do that. I, I think she's gonna snap. No, I don't think so. I'm uh, mark my words. No, today, because... 10 30, 2022, I think your character snaps. No, I think it's gonna be different than Pearl and X. Okay. We've seen Pearl snap two times. We're not going to see Maxine snap because we've seen it. We've seen Mia Goth snap twice. Yeah, but I mean, like, 
but not the character. I still don't think they're going to do it. I would be bored if they did it. Okay, well, fair enough. Well, again, like I said, we'll see what they do with the film. But anyways, it's going to be very interesting to see this trilogy uh, come to an end or maybe stay open because, I mean, he did. He never really referred to this as a trilogy. He said he just kind of wants to make a bunch of movies. Yeah. And he kind of wants to make the view askew. He kind of wants to make the Kevin Smith of horror movies. Yeah. Where they all just kind of take place. Yeah. So it'd be kind of interesting watching a movie years from now. They mentioned The X Massacre. So I think that would be interesting. Yeah. But anyways, uh, that's all the time we got uh, for right now. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this episode will be up on YouTube uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, we'll be on Roku in the next few days. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who joined. Uh, uh, Mr. Bernardi, thank you so much for joining us. Tom Cook, I saw you were watching for a little bit. Uh, thank you, John and Vance, for producing the show. Uh, and tune in next week. We'll have more to talk about. I mean, it's going to get close to the holidays. So we can talk about holiday horror. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we got a lot that we can talk about. Yeah. All right, but until next time, thanks for joining us. I'm Jesse. I'm Sarah. And this has been The Bride of Pimpy. Thank you so much, and have a night.